Hey everyone, happy to be back here uh, to show you the latest technique that I got in store for you, um, which is about creating a very smooth hair outline for your portraits. But before we dive into this, I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for uh, more than 1,000 uh, subscribers. And I'm really, really happy to have reached that milestone together with you. Um, and uh, thank you so much for all your comments uh, that you put uh, below my videos. I try to answer every one of them. Uh, thank you for your emails. Thank you for your Instagram messages. And thank you uh, for all this engagement. That really means a lot to me. Highly, highly appreciate it. And um, yes, uh, the other thing that I wanted to tell you is that uh, in times of crisis like these, um, you probably have, uh, have heard in the news that there's a war in Europe and Ukraine is under attack. Um, my buddy, uh, Quentin Decaillé, uh, a beauty photographer from um, Switzerland and also a fellow Capture One ambassador and me, we decided to um, create uh, a fundraiser for Ukraine. And therefore, we are giving a beauty retouching um, masterclass live on March 29th uh, this year. So it's in a couple of weeks. And we will announce uh, the date uh, again on our social channels. And the thing is that we are putting together uh, really highly valuable techniques for you um, so that you get a ton of value out of this four-hour class that we will put up. And um, we are not asking for any money, but we would highly appreciate if you would donate to uh, an organization that we will show you uh, in the announcement. And... If you donate, you get access to uh, this uh, high-end beauty retouching masterclass and together we can then support Ukraine. And we would really, really be happy if you would be part of that. So um, now I want to show you what we will tackle today. And uh, this is an image. Uh, let's switch to Photoshop. Um, this is a portrait. Uh, shot by Armin Morbach, a uh, ver very well-known uh, beauty and hair photographer from Hamburg, Germany. And I'm collaborating with him uh, in a ton of projects and also for uh, his uh, magazine called Tush. And uh, I put the link in the description so you can check it out. There's so much beauty in this and so many uh, very talented people creating uh, uh, very high-value work. So... Um, this is one of those uh, images that we have created for the online edition of Tush uh, a couple of months ago. And I will put a link to um, this series so you can check out everything, uh, all the images that belong to it. This is um, with in collaboration with Kat Van D. Um, and that's a makeup brand that collaborated with um, Armin uh, on that beauty editorial together with uh, Nikki makeup uh, you will find all the links in the description and uh, I want to show you how to create an outline for hair uh, this is the after that we are going to going for today and uh, I want to show you how to get from this natural outline uh, a little messy um, during the shoot that happens a lot and therefore I want to show you a quick technique how to um, get from this outline to a smooth outline like that. So without further ado, let me show you how this can be done. So the first thing that I do is uh, I will delete those uh, layers that I created so that you can see uh, what steps are necessary to get there. And um, before that, I quickly want to show you what I prepared in this image um, since we're coming from here. And um, so this is the raw converted image. Um, there are a few steps that I took to get to that stage here. I just wanted to prep things so that we can concentrate on the hair outline, but I still want to show you what I did. Now let's uh, create a new empty layer and call it clean outline. And um, what I want to do first is to clean the outline uh, that we have here so this is a natural outline but it is kind of too messy with this one and those hair that strike out too much with the brightness and those single hair and these gaps here 
And there's also an ending hair, there's uh, very thin hair, there's one that goes uh, completely in the opposite direction, one that goes down, one goes up, and this large one here is, uh, is not really nice. And, uh, okay, this part here I prepared. Uh, let me quickly show you. Um, you can see here, right? Um, I prepared that for the sake of the shortness of this video. And uh, I want to show you uh, how to uh, make this part even more realistic. And also on this part, on this side, I want to fill in a few hairs here. Uh, I want to clean that outline and I want to make this very smooth and natural so that you can apply this technique to your portraits and uh, your images very easily. So let's let's start. Uh, let's take the uh, clone stamp tool, set it to 100% opacity, 60% flow is my choice. You can do whatever you feel is best for you and start cleaning up that outline. There are a ton of ways to um, create outlines and to smooth hairlines, but I want to show you one that is very intuitive and very quick and once you have wrapped your hand uh, not hand your head around that uh, it will become second nature with uh, of course i have to admit some practice right so don't expect this to be uh, be uh, like uh, ace in uh, in your first try if you've never done that before but if you're familiar with drawing some hair you will get there uh, in no time if not um, see this uh, as a as a uh, way how to approach this and of course play with it and if you like let me know about your progress and uh, let's continue going down here I, I will take it all away uh, because um, of course you could leave some but uh, I want to show you a quick solution that will bring very natural results I'm going to go very close to this edge so that there is no um, disturbing gap because we have to make sure that with the, with the new drawn hair we have got a very realistic um, transition. I just use the rotate tool pressing the R button uh, to make it more e easy for me because I don't want to have my head around like that all the time. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, doing that the whole day, uh, it looks weird when you get home. Anyhow, let's go there. We're almost done with this side. Um, just deciding if I want to keep that hair or not. I think I'm going to take it away. Yes, like so. And the good thing is when you work on a new empty layer, you can always go back, right? So let's take these out, this one quickly. And of course, this goes on every background. This is a black one, but uh, it works with every background. We are not talking about hair uh, extraction now from um, with extracting the subject from the image and putting it on a new one. That's a very much more complex um, thing to do. And uh, we cannot cover that in, in a short video. And uh, this is... Uh, very advanced uh, way of working with hair so um, this is probably not what you're looking for here uh, when the quick solution for a very nice and neat outline okay let's move over to the right side clean it up quickly too. just take out those hair and uh, work our way down All right, um, let's see. We want to aim for a very believable and very natural outline. And therefore, I want to prep it the best way possible. Okay, this one here goes away. These very, very thin ones that don't really add to the image. Maybe we take out this one as well. Oh, and there are a few ones that I saw that are still in here that we can take out. Therefore, I want to go for um, the um, repair. 
Um, what's that actually called? Um, Therefore, I want to use the uh, therefore I want to use the healing brush uh, with this setting um, spot healing brush, and then uh, with I can with the um, pressure sensitivity activated, I can then move over those parts, and it does a really good job in eliminating those hairs. We could also take this one down a bit here. Let's see if it works. Yes. Just want to merge it a bit more with the background so that it's not as prominent. And we can take out this one very easily and also go for that one. That is a bit disturbing. See how it beautifully works with the uh, direction of the hair falling down. Okay, so we're prepped here now. We can create a new layer and call it hair outline. Now I want to go for a brush, a new brush, and um, I want to set it up like so. 100% um, opacity. It's a soft round brush uh, to start with. I want to activate um, this pressure sensitivity. 100% flow, I want to set the smoothing to 20. Therefore, um, I have more control over the hair that I'm going to draw now. Um, starting on the top left side, I will um, turn the image a bit, go for my brush and hold down the option key to sample the hair color that I want. Let's start with a size of two and see if that works. So what I do now is I'm going to paint in, as you see here, new hair and I want to have it natural. So there can be some that go out like that. That's not a big problem. Some people, you know, uh, it's it's not about being very close to the hair uh, outline. It's about having a natural hairline. And I don't want to have these kind of things going around like that. So that's why we took those out that we had. But I want to, you know, make sure that this transition here uh, is very nice and it's not so abrupt as is abrupt. Yeah, is that the word? Uh, as, as here. And I want to paint in a more dense uh, transition, like so. A couple of brush strokes are necessary for this to achieve, but we can build it up. It's It doesn't have to be in one stroke, right? So let's move uh, our way down here and sample from the area that you are drawing your new hair. You can you know, make some larger ones, then go within uh, with some smaller ones. It just has to be filling up nicely. We can then later um, add some that move out a bit to make it a little more random, like so. But um, don't judge yet. Wait till you see how things snap together, okay? I want to bring some more here. And, um, you know, having a large Wacom tablet is definitely uh, a plus when working on hair retouching because you, have, you can work with your whole arm and not with your wrist. Uh, that's a personal preference, of course, but I made the experience experience that this works much better for me. And I'm going to move my way down here now. So I'm going to turn it a little more to go here and uh, draw a couple of hair that end here so that it's more loose. And I want to make it connect to the hair that has been originally here in that area. Okay. I'm going to turn it around again. And now I'm going to put in a few that are moving a bit more out. See? And I want to close this gap a bit 
sample the color from here and all those that I drew that don't really work in my favor I can take them out later. The thing that we have to keep in mind is that we want to have the same amount of sharpness on the hair that we drew. That is the step that we will tackle next after this. Right? And maybe here a bit more. Okay, like so. Let's see if we can bring in some more that go a little bit more out. Maybe just try, you know, you can always... Apple Z is your friend. Okay, let's leave it like so for the moment. Uh, the thing that I want to do now is move to the right side and do the same here. I'm going to sample from here. I'm going to draw a few larger ones. And then I'm going to connect, make a smooth trans... Uh, trans uh, no, not trans... Transition, yes, uh, from original outline to the new drawn outline. And please be my guest, do it as you wish, um, but as soon as you have got some practice on this, you will see that this works, as I said, in no time. I'm going to sample this color here now, since it's a little darker. And as I said, I will erase what I painted inside a little later. So please bear with me. This is going to go step by step. I'm going to close that gap here. Maybe one more with a little lighter color that goes here. Okay, and go around to this area. This is a highlight reflection, so we can use that. Bring in a nice transition here too. And we can make it, oops, maybe not that long. Make it connect here a bit and continue here. That was too much. I want to have it here, like this transition. I can use this darker color to dim down that highlight here a bit. Don't need it that bright. It's a little distracting. You can also work on that with the curve later on if we think that this is not the way we want it. Okay, and I want to put in a few darker, darker hairs here that give that a nice natural touch. Give it a little more texture there in the darker areas. Maybe some that go out a bit, just like so. Make those areas connect. And uh, yeah, let's see. I want to put in a few here as well to fill this a bit. Let's turn that. You know, I'm right-handed and this way I, I've got some benefits when I turn that, that I can just draw it to the right side. Okay, and maybe we now I will show you um, what we have done so far. Doesn't look supernatural yet, but we are going to duplicate this now and duplicate it again. So one for safety, and I will then merge those two. And now you can see that it's more dense. And thick, 
But um, this is also a step in between. And now I want to see the amount of blur that we have here on the outline and want to match that to the outline that I just drew with blur, Gaussian blur. Well, and maybe 0.7 is already what we need. Looks good, I think. Let's see. Yeah, okay, we can go with that. Let's take a look at the right side. Maybe we can even blur that a little more, but then uh, selectively on the right side. Okay, but this is good. Okay, and what I want to do now is erase those hair with the eraser that I just drew in here that don't really add to the direction of the hair. So we don't need this. Were there more? No, maybe up here. No, but I knew I know that there are some on the right side that don't belong. The one is here. No, not that much. This like so. Here, here, there. Maybe I'm going to take out those. Let's see what it does. Yeah. Okay. Do we have to blur those a little more? Could be. Let's make a rough selection around that since it's a new layer. Go for Gaussian blur. Maybe not 0.7 again. But possibly, let's go for the half, like three, four. Yes, okay. And now, to make it a little more translucent, we can uh, hold down the command key and make a selection of the hair and mask it with the selection of itself. What this does is it makes it more translucent, see? Um, this might be a little too much now, but therefore we have this density slider. We can bring it back to 50%, let's say, and check. And now it starts to be become um, more translucent, which would be very natural with hair in light situations. And maybe we take down a bit more like 40 percent yeah, I think that's that's good I like that and we can do two things we can leave it like that or we can apply the layer mask um, I will commit and I will apply that and then we uh, have the outline here I don't need that safety anymore so I can erase that and now I want to um, put some more hair here on the hair inner line to make it a little more um, natural. Okay, I'm gonna paint in hair now, just like on the outside, sampling the hair color from here, and I wanna fill it up a bit. just to have it, you know, hair clients, they like hair that is healthy and filled and not too clumsy. And uh, this is a good decision to, you know, just make it a little more dense here and uh, work on the flow. We can even extend it a bit so that it goes well with the lengths that we have there. And we can do the same thing, right? We can do uh, a copy of the hair that we just drew. I want to have some that go here and not like that. Uh, maybe just a tiny bit more loose. Some more here. Let's see the before and after. Yes, that's okay. We could. It's on you, right? So. 
Um, you can do whatever feels natural for you. I wouldn't gonna wouldn't go too crazy, but still having something like that uh, does give you a very natural impression. Um, maybe we can also fill some more hair here and even with the darker color take out this highlight there a bit so it's not too distracting yeah like so we can then have it like that make a copy and another one keep it for safety Take those bottom two, merge them together, and try to match the amount of blur that is needed on that side. 0.4 does look good. Okay, let's go for that. And then again, command click the hairline and mask it with itself. Take down the density to 40 to 50 percent. Let's go 45. That works. Okay, one can argue now to put grain on this now, but I'm going to put a lot of grain in the end because uh, in, in this case, uh, we wanted to have that series uh, a lot of grain and therefore it will cover uh, the rest. Now we can, uh, one thing that I would like to try is to fill a bit this, these holes here. And uh, I'm going to create a new layer, call it fill hair. And there's many options. You can um, clone an area out of the image and put it in, but also you can draw. I'm going to go for three. It's the size of the brush. Take the color from hair that is close by and take a different color and then match it and I uh, want to close those holes and adjust the brush as I go sampling new hair color pushing holding down the alt or option key I want to close this here, make a more smooth transition to that one. And again, we have to um, adjust the amount of blur to the hair that is already there. And if we're not satisfied with what we have here now, we can always you know, go steps back, take the new layer completely away and go for a new try and I encourage you to do so because it's probably not going to be right on the first try and that's okay you have to get used to that and you have to make your way finding the technique technique that works the most convenient for you and gives you and your client the most satisfying results and now that we have got that see what it does um, I'm going to copy that no safety layer yet. Give it uh, a decent amount of blur. I guess in this case, 0.8 would be nice. So, or maybe even more. One, like so. And now you see that it merges in pretty nice. We could go for the same masking technique. Maybe just a bit, like 30% density. Yeah. Good. And apply. All right. Um, well, let's see what we did. I think we approached the end pretty soon. And the outline is nice. It has a believable uh, flow now. Uh, this is filled nicely, so uh, this area gets a little less distracting. And also, uh, this part is neat and natural. What do you think? Okay, um, last things to be done. 
I'm going to add some look to it, uh, which is just a contrast curve. Let's go for the whole image. I want to have a little more contrast and a little more um, less saturated look. Therefore, I boosted the contrast with an S curve, took down the opacity to 49%. And I use an invert layer. For those of you that haven't worked with an invert layer yet, invert is a great way to reduce saturation in your image, uh, balancing out the, um, the amount of saturation with the exact opposite of every color. Okay, so let me demo. Um, you take the invert layer, which basically inverts the whole image, and uh, you set it to color mode. So it only inverts every color, right? And um, with this being active, you can then go down to 50%, which is completely neutral image. And if you go down to zero, um, you can then build it up ever so slightly. And a few percent is enough, like, like 13 is already way too much. But if you put in like, let's say 4%, especially with uh, the image being not so saturated uh, yet at all, um, you can then bring in uh, a decent amount of desaturation. I think in the original it was with 5, 4 is working well. I think 2. Let's go for 5 and see what it does. So the look is this. And then I am adding some grain, and if we go to 100%, you can see what it does, right? So you have that, oops, not that one, this one. Hope you can see that in the resolution on the screen. It's a lot of grain, but in this case, we wanted it to be a little edgy, and uh, it merges super well with the new drawn hair. Of course, you don't have to do that to your image, but this way we wanted to have that kind of look. And uh, it merges super well with the outline. And you can see that it's uh, looking very natural. And I, uh, I'm sure that if you wouldn't know, you wouldn't say that this is retouched. All right, now we're done with this short tutorial on creating a very smooth natural hair outline. I'm super interested if this technique helps you. So please put your uh, comments right down here below uh, this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if this helps you, if this works for you. Um, this is a technique that I use a lot in images uh, that I create for uh, hair and beauty clients and also um, in, in beauty and fashion editorials. And uh, as I said, it's a simple technique for uh, a, a more or less easy hair task. There's much more to it uh, in, in hair retouching, but I guess this technique helps you a lot in dealing with flying hair in your images. And uh, if you like that, please also leave a thumbs up for uh, the video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And um, let me know um, what kind of topics you're interested in uh, next. And please don't forget, as I said earlier in the video, um, we are going to do uh, high-end beauty retouching masterclass together with Quentin uh, Decayer, also a Capture One ambassador like me. And uh, we want to support Ukraine and the people there that are affected by the war. And um, we are giving that four-hour live tuition where you can interact with us and we are going to walk you through our whole process of uh, Capture One development and also uh, high-end retouching techniques that help you in your uh, beauty retouching work. And uh, the only thing you need to do is to um, donate to uh, an organization that is uh, supporting the people in Ukraine and send us the receipt. And therefore, you get um, the link to the private stream that we will host on the March 29th, uh, 2022. We are super thrilled to see as much people uh, as possible there. We will also share that uh, with our community in Capture One. And uh, happy to see you there. Um, I'm happy to see you in my next video. And until then, I wish you nothing but the best. Happy retouching. My name is Jan, signing out. Peace.